How do you add chocolate and mint flavors to your classic daiquiri? Easy, make a scorpion kick. My name is David Edwards and it's great to have you here today. The Scorpion Kick was created by Dan Greenbaum of the Diamond Reef in Brooklyn, New York. Now this is a variation of the daiquiri that's got some unique flavors built into it. It's really, really simple to make and has only like five ingredients. Now, before we get into making the cocktail, this video was sponsored by the Vector Bar Mixology app for the iPhone. Now, this is a shaken cocktail, so make sure you grab yourself a shaking glass or a tin. And we're going to start with a little bit of mint. And for that, we need anywhere between four to six mint leaves, depending upon the size of your leaves. So what you wanna do is you just wanna make sure that you give them a really good slap to wake up the oils in the actual cells of the mint, and then dump them into your glass. And your second ingredient is going to be some lime juice. So grab yourself a lime and just roll it around to break up all the membranes inside so that it'll actually squeeze out much easier. And for this, we're going to measure out a full one ounce or 30 milliliters. Your third ingredient is your sweetener. Now in this case, I'm using a cane syrup and this is made in those ratios of one to one one part cane sugar, one part water, heat it up till it goes nice and clear and you are gonna have a fantastic color with this, but you don't need a lot of this. We only need a quarter of an ounce, which is seven and a half mils. And one of the reasons we're only using just a little bit of the cane syrup is that the rest of our sweetness will actually come from our chocolate liqueur, AKA creme de cacao. Now I'm using McGinnis brand here and we're not going to use a lot. We're just gonna use a little bit more than we did of the cane syrup of half an ounce or a total of 15 mils. Our next ingredient is our base spirit. In this case, we're going to use some white rum and you can adjust your flavors slightly depending upon the rum you use, but I suggest using something light in flavor. That way the flavors for the mint and the chocolate and the cane syrup will really stand out and build this cocktail for you. But we're going to use a total of two ounces or 60 milliliters. Now our next step is one of the reasons why we only spanked our mint. We didn't actually muddle it like you would with say a mojito. And the reason for that is because we're going to shake it with some ice. And when you shake it with ice, what happens is the mint actually becomes pulverized. So you don't wanna pre-pulverize it because if you do, what will happen is you'll actually get some bitterness that's released by the actual uh, cell membranes itself. That's the mitochondria. So make sure you've got a good solid, a good solid lid because when you flip it like that, you don't want it to go apart. And then what you're gonna do is just shake it with a smile. All right, so you wanna make sure that you shake that for a good eight to 10 seconds because all you're trying to do is just chill it down, dilute it a little bit, and you're trying not to totally destroy everything in your glass. Having said that, we're going to serve this in a nice up style and a fantastic looking Nick and Nora glass. And you wanna make sure that you actually fine strain this because you wanna keep out any pulp from the lime juice or actual fragments of mint leaves. Oh, look at that. Absolutely unique to look at. The color is fantastic. Immediately I get just a little bit of mint, but nothing else. Mmm, really good. You have that mint, you have that rum, you have that little bit of chocolate and they're subtle flavors that are beautifully blended together, all held together by the cane syrup. If you like a cocktail like this, Take a look after the recipe card right up here.